Hi everybody. Happy uh, April the 1st. Um, Steph K here and uh, today we're going to do a tutorial on brows. And I know it's April 1st but this is for real. We're actually going to do brows. I'm not going to pull a funny on you. Um, I hope that uh, everything's going well with everybody and that this this COVID craziness isn't getting to you too much. I've actually been having a lot of fun. I've uh, been doing a lot of cooking and I did baking the other day and it actually worked out. And I cooked a turkey upside down, but that's, that's a story unto its own. I didn't realize why it had a big hole in it and it had no legs. <laughs> but it turns out that I was cooking it on its legs and they disintegrated. But it was good. <laughs> Anyways, um, tales of the kitchen, as they say. Um, so... I'll just, just wait a couple seconds here just to see if anybody um, hops on live. Uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure who's here. Um, but what we're going to do with this particular tutorial, because um, a few people asked for brows, and they, they really do help to set the whole look of the makeup. Um, and they're often overlooked. I know that there was like a massive brow craze um i was with sephora like end of 2015 like right into 2018 hi mama i see my mom just jumped on i see her little gardening photo um so there was there was this big craze in um sort of you know 2016 17 18 in there and it's it's sort of died back um but i'm telling you i think a lot of the brows looked fabulous um you know, certain cultures really, really emphasize the brows, but it goes with the overall makeup, right? It's not like, um, I think that there were a lot of, you know, interpretations here uh, that looked a lot like Groucho Marx. You know, people would come in and if you, if you mess with your brow, you know, you can look just plain angry. You know, when you're looking at somebody and you're going like, what did I do? And it's like, oh no, no, it's just, you got some angry brows. So, what I'm going to do today is just focus on um, the, the same sort of format. So we'll look at a couple of um, just different tools. And, and don't let the word tool intimidate you. It's just, you know, like what, what are the, the simple little gadgets you use to help um, to shape your brow? With respect to something like, um, you know, actually like tweezing and trimming and all of that kind of stuff, um, I'll just speak a little bit theoretically about it. I'm not about to, to get on here and start chopping away my brows because that wouldn't be good. I actually do believe when it comes to um, the, the, the trimming especially and the tweezing and, and the shaping, if you're starting at ground zero, uh, I do believe in going to a professional to get that done. Um, there are some, some great ladies that you might know independently. Like I know that, I mean, I'm in the Ajax area, a lot of great locals here. Um, support them now, especially if you go to, um, you know, Oshawa or some of the Sephora's, they've got the benefit brow bars and I've got some gals there like Teresa and Lauren, like they're, they're fantastic. Um, so anyways, that's like just a little bit about, you know, do I go at my own brows and tweez and, and pluck at them? Not, not too, too much really. I mean, just like the underside. Yeah, that, that I'm not intimidated to do, but I don't, I don't go too crazy with all of the other stuff. Um, so what, uh, I'm going to talk to you about to start, um, would be just some of the different products you're going to encounter when it comes to actually shaping the brow. And, you know, like this is, this is my, here we go, big old face in the mirror, in the camera. But, you know, this is, there's nothing on my brows right now. So this is, um, my natural brow shape and, um, you know what, I mean, I'll use a couple products just to sort of fill it in. Um, I can do it with just one just because, you know, it's, it's quite substantial to begin with. Uh, there are sometimes good combinations of products you can use because if you don't have any brow hair to begin with, which is one of the comments that had popped through the thread, I mean, all is not lost there. You know, you, we can still create, you know, a nice brow, even if your starting point is almost nothing. Um, so I'm just going to show you some of the different products right now and sort of how they, how they differ. And, um, pardon me, I like to go from, like, I'd like to say kind of going from easiest to hardest, but you kind of can't do that with brow products because it really depends on how much brow hair you have. 
Um, and then the experience does play in. So for some people, you know, you might be able to get away with um, just a powder, right? Just a powder to fill in your brow. But the thing is, if you just use a powder um, and you don't, you don't really have much hair to work with, Throughout the course of the day, you know, just it's gonna, it's just like an eyeshadow, like unless you you use a wax to build it first. Um, if you use eyeshadow on its own and you just try to make a brow out of that, it's gonna be very faint. Um, and just the natural oils of your skin, it's probably just going to wash away with very little time. I've seen that happen. You can get products. Um, Senna makes some S E N N A. It started out with a brow wax, right? And the point of the brow wax would actually to be um, giving the brow powder something to adhere to. Um, I don't have one of the waxes here, unfortunately, to show it to you. But you would literally, you know, like dip into the wax and you would you would press it into the upper brow area, and especially when it's where it's PC. And then you would take the powder and then sort of press on top, and then it it gives you somewhat of a structure. It gives you some volume there. Um, so. You know, you might, certain eyeshadows will work uh, well for your brow hair. Um, so I, in terms of, um, you might see something like this. Like this is something I would use professionally, right? This is like a, this is an Anastasia, I see it's a little beaten, but it's an Anastasia brow palette. You don't need a palette because you've only got one set of eyebrows unless you're going to do something really funky, right? But, you know, it goes through the whole color spectrum and then there's the building wax down there. Um, but you know, you'll, you'll, so, so if you see a powder, you'll, you would just pick one of these for your particular, um, brow and you'll see a lighter one and a darker one. And the lighter one you can use sort of for, um, a mapping or for just, just to help map out the brow. It doesn't get too dark. The, the, the darker ones you're going to use where you want sort of more definition. Even the lighter one you might use in the front area because you don't want to, you don't want to be making sort of a square brow at the front. So you know, powders on their own. Can I use a powder on my own? Yes, because look at my starting point, right? I would just use a powder and I would just fill in the areas where it's a little bit patchy. Um, if I didn't have a brow whatsoever, just a powder on its own, I don't think it's going to cut it for, just from personal experience. So powder would be the first one. Um, then you get into different types of pencils and you might, they all have different ends. Look at the, the end of the pencil and they're going to help to dictate how much precision the brush is going to give you. So um, you might find one, like this is one of benefit. This is like a precisely my brow. Okay, so something like this, you roll it up. These ones all roll. Um, and then the product pops up. You can see how, how fine that is. Very, very fine tip on that. Um, so these just roll up, they roll down. Um, so these are great. It's called precise in my brow for a reason, right? So these are great for, you know, creating a very nice thin line um, just for like just filling in areas where um, you just need a little bit of, of precision, right? Uh, these ones, if you're if you have a lot of filling in to do, they can they can run out a little bit easy. So another product that was created and, and different brands will make this. I'm just, I happen to have the benefit ones here and that's why I'm showing you, but I know Anastasia makes them as well. Um, and, and they, those two brands kind of went head to head in a brow product competition. See one like this. I don't know if you can see the shape of it. So first of all, it's wider. And second of all, if you look at the top, it's in a triangle form. The, the idea of this, and this is great for someone like me because I got, I got a lot of brow. The tip of it is meant to do the precision and then the wider area, you can just fill it in afterwards. So it's, it's wider. You don't feel like you're taking forever with a, a, a tiny little tip like this to fill in your brow when I can just do a couple of sweeps and then fill it in quickly because I've got a lot of brow and it's thicker, right? So if you're looking for precision, it's supposed to give you both. The tip of the thing will give you the, the finer point and then the wider part is just to fill in, okay? So that's, um, but in terms of formulation, the formulations are the same. It's more what type of um, end do you want on the brush? And then this, this is a smaller version of this because it does, they come with the spoolie in their bums, which is fantastic, right? Because often I'll be applying a little bit of product and then I brush it through, you know, you know because it, it can be PC. You want it to just be a really smooth looking brow. Um, 
And here's one from this one. I This one is, is Arbonne's version. This is the dark brown. This one I, I really love as well. The formulation is a little bit more dense and it's, it's um, kind of in between those two because it's got a rounded, so it's got the spoolie in the bum, right? And then it has, you know, it does have a bit of a point here as well. Um, as it, even when it was wearing down though and becoming a little bit more rounded because I have quite a bit of brow, I could use a bit of powder to shape and then I would just use this to fill in. Okay. Um, all right. So that's, those are sort of pencils, right? So first we spoke powders, you know, just like powders. If you've got a full brow, you can just use them to sort of piece in missing areas. Um, you know, like I said, there are products that come with um, like a pomade or a, a wax, I should say not a pomade, a wax, right, to, to press into the brow area where it's PC and then the powder will stick on top. Then we spoke about pencils, so super fine tip pencil like this, they, they roll up, they roll down. You don't sharpen them. That's, that's the difference between this and something like an eye pencil because um, they're, very, uh, they're very dense and they, they don't get all mushy, right? Um, because they're they're pulling through and and they're creating structure. They're pulling through your brow, so they they're not they're not particularly soft, but they're soft enough to give a payout and work through the brow, right? And again, this one like they all the brow pencils for the most part that I can think of, yeah, they all have a spoolie in their bum. Um, and then this one again, it had the tip for precision. It had the thicker part so that after you sort of map out the brow, you can just pull the color through, turn the spoolie around, right? And I'll actually you know use a couple of these. Um, just to show you, you know, how they work. So that's pencils, that's powders. Now you get cool products like this, like these are one and the same kind of thing, right? So it's, you might look at it and go, what the heck is that? And it's like a little, little mascara wand. Um, so that is um, the little Arbonne version. Here's a benefit version of the same thing, right? Um, now, the beauty of these guys there's a, you know what, these are, these are good for a number of reasons, right? Um, sometimes you'll get, um, a gray hair. If you're like, I, you, you'll get a gray hair that might pop through and that's really annoying. And so to try to capture that gray hair and hit it with a pencil is really, really hard. You know, you might dust a powder on it. It might catch it, but it's difficult. Um, so these kind of products because they're like a liquid mascara for the brows they actually sweep on top and they cover gray hairs like that when you get them in your brows and it's pretty amazing um, and what you can also do with these guys to build volume is you work backwards with them so that you're getting the back side of the hair and then you brush forward and then it gives the brows more volume okay they're, they are a liquid like they're like a mascara so you have to be a little bit careful with them um, and they tend to work best if you have sort of like, uh, well, you can, I was going to say if you have like sort of a medium volume of hair to a little bit more, like a little bit more full, it's kind of easier because you can catch the hair because they're in place. Um, if, you, so if you have very, very sparse, something like that, uh, what are you going to catch, right? Like they're meant to, to sit on the hair and give them more volume. So if you don't have a lot of brow hair, these guys can be a little bit more tricky. Um, okay, now uh, here's a this type of product is a pomade, okay, um, and it's a cream, like it's a cream sort of pomade product. A lot of times, a lot of times these products are waterproof. I think almost everything I've shown you is waterproof. Um, the benefit ones are for sure. This one is is Tarts, and it is I believe waterproof as well. Now these guys. <laughs> Um, you got to be careful because you are getting a thick cream and it's very pigmented and if you're not careful, uh, you get the Groucho Marx look in one fell swoop. It, they can be a mini minor disaster or they can be fantastic. Okay, so with a product like this, you would take, you know, a really, really thin brow brush. I'd use this brush for, for anything, really, in my brows. Um, and you, you're you going to take a bit of the product and really wipe it down on the edges or right into the lid so that there's hardly anything on the brush. And then you can manage it. But if you just take a scoop of it and you put it on, um, it's you're going to have angry brows without even trying, right? So that's a, that's a pomade. Um, and I'd say this one's a little bit more advanced if you're not careful. It, it can be the one that is, um, because it's waterproof, because it's a cream, because the color is just so dense, 
Uh, if you don't watch what you're doing, you know, you, you might want to graduate to something something like this or get a pro to show you how to do it like on your own face um, and then it can work really, really well. What I've done in the past before too, and again, this is for my pro kit and for anybody that's that's turning up late, um, which is great, it's fine, hi, welcome. Um, you know, I was saying that some, some places will have the dual color of shadow, one for the light, like that helps shading, or if you want to do an ombre, like lighter in certain areas, and then use the darker for really where you want structure and definition. And I also have created my own before, like I've gone into, you know, a store and just, you know, you can look at an eyeshadow palette um, and just like, you know, put together some darker shades that you might want to use for eyeshadow and for brows. Uh, so generally when you are picking, so let's, let's get into now step one, picking an eye, the, the, the shade. All right. So you kind of just look at me quickly and you go, Oh, black, pick black. I don't pick black, black. I don't, my God, even with, with the gals of the beautiful ebony skin, I very seldom would pick pure black like I might use it to enhance or help to draw the shape in certain areas but black is 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 harsh unless you're going for like goth or a certain type of very dramatic look maybe um you know like a middle eastern type makeup they might use a black but I very seldomly used black when I was you know, professionally doing people's faces and I don't use it on my own um so when you're looking at your so look at I mean your eyebrows are telling like that that's the color you pick. go with your 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 natural eyebrow color now if you start to go you know gray or say you do you know like highlights in your hair um still go with your original eye color like your your original brow color um and it, it because if you like say you're, you're going gray like you have a lot of white around here and you go with like a, a really light shade look it looks crazy you're gonna look like um like a, a frozen wizard or something. It doesn't look right. If you have hair that naturally has, say, you know, like blonde and sort of taupey, taupey blend, like if you have blended hair, go with the darker of the shades. And generally, this is a general rule because we all have, um, oh, hi, Zita. Uh, I'm sorry, I just said hello to the Philippines. Um, but generally go with the darker shade and sort of the cooler shade so with me I would go with um, like a cooler a cooler shade of a dark dark brown if I went for a warm shade of brown um, it just makes my eyes look all washed out right so generally the cooler generally it's the cooler shades but you know I would look at each of you individually and I am creating blends you know I'm I'm like when I when I go at a client like I'm I'm like tapping into in different areas of this palette to get the right color but you know a lot of a lot of um, brands will make a spectrum of colors so you know go and get matched properly but just look at your brow your natural brow color and go with like if you go, generally go with a cooler shade I know I might have like you know um like yeah, like, like some of my friends have like you know beautiful you know auburn hair you know but still don't go with like a bright auburn go with a deeper auburn and it just really helps to frame and set the eyes in terms of the order of operations when i'm doing makeup um i always do my brows first uh i didn't do them today i did the rest of of my makeup i did a quick makeup and now my first tendency was to go to the brow and why is that when we're creating an overall makeup look, um, what we're doing is we're creating an upward and outward. I keep saying upward and outward, but that's, that's you know, we're going for that sort of overall symmetry. Okay, so let's get into now um, how, like, uh, in terms of the actual shape and the placement and that sort of thing of the brow. I'm going to give you some really, this is a very, like, very, very basic rules to follow. Um, and these ones are, they should work for any really type of face. Um, so this is just some ideas about symmetry. Okay. Um, so when you're, when you're looking directly at your face, there's going to be sort of four things that we're going to do to map out, um, what, what the brow, where it should start, where the art should be and where it should end. Okay. So start, middle, end. All right. You might hear some people speak about the edge of the nose and going straight up. Now, with me, that more or less works, um, but that's not what I'm going to recommend. If you have a, um, you know, if your nose is wider, 
at the base. Imagine if, if I started my brow here, okay? We don't want to do that. When you're looking at a brow, you have a natural curvature, right? To the face, to this bone structure, right? And it's just a, con it's a con continuation of just this natural arch that occurs. So see how if I'm just mapping it out, I have a natural arch that occurs. If you take your brows and you start them too close in here, first of all, you're going to look angry and you might, you're going to look angry. You might look a little bit cross-eyed as well, because when people look at you, your eyes are coming closer to get, everything's being drawn in together because that's a very strong line and, and the eyes will go to on the face, the strongest part of, of that line. Like up this, they go to the, the, the strongest, darkest line on your face is where people are looking at you. So they're going to be drawn. I don't know how many times have you ever looked at someone with a strong brow? And like I said, either they look really angry or it's like, they're very quizzical. They look cross-eyed. Oh my God, it's simply their brow. So where do we go? Um, you can look at the inner eye, like the starting point of the eye and go straight up. And for a lot of people that will also align to sort of this dent, see the dent in the nose? If you go straight up, it's kind of in there, right? So that's marker number one, or it's just simply, where does your eye start? And that can be marker number one, okay? And you can actually like, you know, take take a little little tiny, like whatever brow product you're gonna use, um, you can take a little marking and just kind of put it there um, just to say, okay, that's like, you know, that's one of my starting points. Now I'm gonna look over here. I realized the other day I was doing this tutorial and I had my hand in front of most of what I was doing for part of it. So if I go with the inner eye, I can go up or I can go for just, just basically sort of in this area, right? So that's kind of my starting point. So point number one, go straight up and just sort of make, you know, like a little dot or just a little marking. The second, right, would be going from the edge of the nose, right? A lot of people will say the the dark dot or the pupil. I wouldn't go by there because your arch is going to be in the wrong place. It's going to be too high. You want this kind of outward angle. So you're going to go from the edge of the nose to the iris. See the outer iris? And there, that's where I would be marking is above the iris if I start at the nose, Okay. So it would be, you know, like right about there where it naturally does occur. So, you know, you might just take, you know, like just a little dot and just say, okay, there's my upper iris. That's, the, you know, like roughly where I'm going to go, you know, where I'm going to map it out. And then for the outer part, okay. You see, when you have big lips and you're doing a tutorial and you go and make a motion, then you get lipstick on your cheek because my lips are flat. Never mind. And the last part is take the outer the outer edge of the nose to the outer eye, and that's where the brow should end. Okay? Da -da -da. And here we go with that imaginary line I referred to before when we were doing eye makeup. So three points. Here, upper arch above the iris, starting from the nose, and the um, from the nose to the outer eye, and that's where your eyebrow should end. Okay? We good? Um, and again... And, and so the idea is, you know, it's like a nice upward angle. Here's a couple of things. First of all, if you overpluck your eyebrows, you're going to get to a point where they're going to stop growing in. And, you know, when you have that little dip here and then it's really, really super thin and it comes down and it starts to look like something that, you know, males give you for reproduction. I'm sorry. It looks like a little, you know, what on your head. That ain't, that's not attractive. Also, a brow generally from, it goes from thicker, right, to thinner and it arches down. Um, if you just create a super thin brow and it has this arc, you're going to look surprised. Like it looks like someone just came up and blah, right? Like this is what we do when we're surprised. We create this, this ridiculous arch and it's super thin, right? A, a, a brow should have a thick, to a thinner definition to it. It's not all just one little arch, like a McDonald's arch. Look like you're walking around with McDonald's arch symbols on your head. Um, and also, you know, this area from here to here, like this, as you as you age and this starts to fall, you know, this this area of, of skin, it starts to get wider and it and it looks more aged when you have super thin brows. So you just want them to look a little a little a little bit more full. Okay, so what we're going to do, um, I'll just show you what I would do. So I take a brush like this, like a little spoolie brush, okay? Um, and the products I'm going to use, I'm going to use um, a precision pencil, right? Just to map out the shape um, and then just show you what I would do on a regular basis. So I'll use a precision pencil and then maybe a little bit of, of powder just to fill it in, just to sh show you how you can use, you know, two different things to work together. Um, just because I do have a lot of brow and... 
you know, I want it to be fair to those that, that don't. Um, oh yeah. So let's start with, I'm going to take, um, I'll take the, the in between. I'm going to use this guy. This is my dark brown shape it pencil. And so you can take any of your pencils that have a spoolie. Okay. And that roll up, right? So in the front part of the brow, just right in here, right? Keep that lighter. You, you might see, um, someone create like some, some people will create a great big triangle and map it out. A harsh line like that is very severe. It's, it's very unnatural, right? So what I do first is I would just take the spool end of my brush and I would brush upward, right? That, Cause that's the way that the brow naturally grows, right? And I just want to see what I have to work with. So I'm brushing upward and over and then pull the hair across. And then, see, it grows upward, right? But then it starts to grow downward at the midpoint. I don't know if you've ever looked closely at your brow, but that's what it does. So I am just taking it, and then I'll pull it in and just say, okay, you know, as a natural starting point. And, and you know, this area, yeah, I could clean it up. I'm leaving my brows very natural right now. I'm pretending I'm doing it on purpose, but these are corona brows. But anyways, let's see what we have to work with, right? Now, if you were going to trim your brows, you know, you 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 would you know, brush up and to see what kind of hairs are sort of renegade. But you have to watch when you're doing any kind of trimming um, because the, if you start to mess too much with the upper, the upper brow, you start to mess with the overall shape of your eyebrow. And that can be a little bit disconcerting. You'll have to wait till they grow back if they do. So I brush upward here again, right? And then I brush, I just kind of pull the hairs across because they go up across, right? And then down. So I'm just really looking at the natural shape and pulling them into place. Sometimes even brushing your brows makes a big difference and then you could pull brow gel through if your brows are, are nice looking and it just holds them into place and they look really, really good. Um, okay, so I've, I've brushed them into place. Okay, so the where, where I begin is I don't begin right on this inner part, right? Because I want to just leave that a little bit softer looking. So I take a, a step in and what I like to do, I find this really, really easy is I, I etch out the lower shape of the brow to the end point. And that just gives me a mapping so I don't feel like I'm just like, you know, like a, one of my friends once said, like a piglet, a piglet in the wilderness wandering around going, what do I do with this? Okay. So, um, and I had mentioned to you, I'm sorry, that there are four, four key points to look at when we're mapping out the brow. So this was sort of number one, where does the eye begin? The iris the end point, but when we're creating this upward slope, there is yet another point, and this is all from Senna Brow. She's, she's like a, a wizard in, in brows. The inner part of the eye, imagine your, your marking going up to where you created your arch, right? And that's the sort of natural angle that you, the, the upward angle that you want the actual brow to have, okay? So you see how it's creating a natural angle, this, okay? So it's an upward slope and it's not one of these. All right, so I'm gonna take a pencil because I find this really, really easy to do. Um, just a second here. I'm going to just, just one second. I'm going to have to do one thing. Excuse me for one sec, guys. Okay, sorry, I had to just do a pause. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so I'm going to bring my little mirror closer here. Okay. Now taking a step in and keeping in mind that angle and watch what happens just when I etch in the lower brow. Okay. So I'm just taking this pencil and I'm just mapping out the direction. Okay. You can already see that sort of starting to take place. Okay. And then I'm going to continue onward and then just go to my end point. Okay. And then I like to just take this and sort of just soften a little bit and just pull that into the brow. Okay. And I don't like that to go too, too, too harsh, right? But you can already see the difference by just taking a color and just like pulling it through. So all I did was I went to my lower, my lower, um, my lower brow line, pulled it through and then just finished it. Right. But can you see that already the definition between the two? Okay. So again, you're just gently taking it and you're going to map it through and then just take it to your end point. Okay. And I always am going back and forth with the end of the spoolie just to soften anything that I've done. Now, in terms of filling it, 
Um, that is, is sort of my first mapping and I find that the easiest thing to do. I could take this pencil, if you have a lot of brow like I do, and I could just go through and sort of fill it in uh, at this point, right? Um, and then you might, and then what you would do is just take the upper brow, right? And I like to just say, okay, is it, is it patchy anywhere here? I don't use the pencil so much for the top part. I would be more likely to use a brow powder because I feel a little bit more control with it. And that line is in pretty good shape right? So then what I'm going to do is you're creating um, upward and outward strokes because that's the way the brow actually grows. You're creating hairs. It's not, um, it's not creating like a, a bar. You want them to look natural, right? So the motion I use when I'm actually doing a brow, if you watch, again, I'm not going to start here just because I want to keep that a little bit lighter, right? So I'm going to go upward because that's the way the brow grows in this area. It's an upward motion, right? And then you start to pull it sideways because that is the way that the hair grows. So it's, it's, you're going sideways like this to fill in the brow. Okay. And I'm going to keep going over here so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. And then I put some of the product in and then I take my spoolie, right? And I'm going to pull it through as I go. Okay. See how it's already just taking shape. And then I come over here. Okay. And then I'm going to pull that hair down because that's the way that the brow hair grows. Okay. And let me know if you're all still with me. Um, all right, and then I'll do just a couple of motions downward, and then I'm going to end the brow. Okay, now see the motion I keep pulling using the, this and pulling it into shape. Um, now these products, because they're they're like a pencil, or they're they're like you know there, there's like a creamy element to them. If you feel like it's it's getting too dense or it's too much product, you can also use it in combination with a brow powder, right? So um, I would take um, my spoolie and like in this area, I like to use more of a powder just because it's, it's a softer look. And like I said, the hairs here grow up and you're going to pull them forward. So I would take like a, like a cool brown color, which I have here. Um, like a, a like a medium to dark brown in a cool color, right? And now I'm just going to go and say, okay, where else can I fill in the brow? And so in this area, I'm going to go upward, right? I'm just going to fill it in, fill it in, okay? See, the, what, what are the strokes, guys? They're just like little tiny... Ch -ch 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 -ch. On the upper, if I feel like I want to make this look a little bit um, more defined, right? As I said, if you just, you know, go brush over and down, you can see that line a little bit better. So watch making that too, too severe. But what I do along the top of the brow, okay, um, is I would just, and see, okay, when you're looking at brow pencils, very, 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 very compressed. You don't want anything fluffy or you're not going to get the look you want because you're, you're creating hairs. Okay, you're creating hair, so you need to have a very compressed brush. This one is Tarte's version, um, and Anastasia Beverly Hills makes quite a few good ones as well, and Benefit makes them as well. These, these are some of the main ones. Um, so I'm just going to go along the top, right? And I'm just going to make little strokes just along the top of that brow, okay? And then when I, when I come along here, I like to make a sort of downward motion to follow the way that my uh, the, the hairs grow in my brow. So every time every time I'm making sort of a stroke or, or or like some sort of motion, I'm following the way that the hair is growing up, up, across, right, and then down, and that follows hair growth. Okay, um, there. So. You can already see that like the makeup was done on both sides, but you know, this looks more polished already. This is done with a brow, like a, a precision pencil, which was this one, right? Just to, to map out the lower shape first and then come back and fill it in. And then I've come in with a brow powder, right? And in this area now, I would take a, sort of just a lighter shade in the same family. So if I'm looking at something like this, right? Like I use this to fill in certain spots of the of the of the brow, and then I use this kind of just toward the the front area, going straight above. And I'm just going to do upward gentle motions, right? And just do a few, but they should start to curve. You know, not necessarily just straight up and down. So just like a couple, and and then just. Picture them starting to curve and go that way. Okay, is everybody still with me? I just want to make sure we're all seeing on in the same 
uh, choir here and I don't have someone off in a different band. Okay. So just like, let, let me know if you're able to follow this. Okay. All right. So that was two products and one, um, one simple tool. Okay. And each time I always just go back to my spoolie and just say, um, you know, how are we doing? So personally, I would just leave now at the end of the brow, um, like mine could use some, you know, help from the, the benefit brow girls, but see how it's just, it's just very natural. Okay. Um, and that's where you can use some of these, these sort of darker, darker shades of powder, or you could use that pencil because you really want the end to be defined, right? So I'm just coming along here and you pull, you pull the top down towards the end and then see how it's just very simple. That was just done with the powder. Okay. So I, I would just go through and, you know, it's, it doesn't look super then super thick or anything like that because I don't want it to. And you know how I first just etched it out, um, with the pencil it's because, but then I did still soften the pencil up into the brow. Now this, so with this brow, it's like, say you wanted this one to look, um, just like a little bit more polished. Uh, here's another trick. You got the brow done, right? And that looks pretty good. I look schnazzy all set to go out, all dressed up and no place to go like the rest of us. Now, here's a fun trick to make the brows pop even more after you've completed them, right? Um, you can take a concealer. So this is just whatever. Any The concealer you'd use under your eyes, use it, right? Um, take it. And, and what I'm doing now is I am just finishing the brow by making it look more polished, right? So what you do is you take a brush, um, I like a brush that uh, isn't too, too big and think of one that, you know, you might even use sort of uh, in the lip area, right? You don't want a fluffy brush for this because you're working with a liquid and fluff, fluffy brushes and liquids for precision generally don't work as well. So something like you'd use for a lip brush or something like this, right? Because I got a, a big eye area. Look at your eye area and that's the size of brush you'd use. I'm going to go even smaller. Like see something like that. So I'm going to take some of the product. Okay. Just a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to now finish the brow by using concealer. Okay. So I'm going to go and, and so you see how it looks, it looks pretty schnazzy to begin with. Um, I'm going to go up under the brow. I'm, I'm looking at you guys here. And so I'm doing my best to, to, to try to let you see what I'm doing. Okay. So can you already see how that line is looking all that in a bucket of chicken and fries? Okay. And I'm going to go down here, keep going, keep going. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm just mapping out the brow even more. Look at how much more defined that looks. And that was just taking a little bit of concealer and going along the lower line, right? And then you can just go right to the point, finish it. Okay. Were we good? Is that easy? You're still with me. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Ati. Okay. So then I'm going to do it on the top as well. Okay. So watch out going too light because your eyebrows can look like they're like, yeah, they're jumping off your head like a, like a little bit wackadoo. We don't want that. Then I'm going to take the top. I'm going to do it along the top too, right? You can, you can just see that bit of concealer going along the top. Okay. And then we come around. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes, when she comes, sing, we'll be coming, so never mind. Okay, and then up here, right, just, this is just a concealer close to the brow, fade it, fade it, all right, and then right along the point, boom. Pretty good, eh? You didn't know that Steph K could do a brow because I go in with natural brows. Look at the difference, okay? This is like the starting point, all right? And this is the end point for a natural brow, a natural brow, okay? And then look at like this. I can tell I'm so not a YouTuber yet. All right, so you just look at this, right? And it's like, hi, like this. And then you look at this. What a difference, right? Did you see how magical I was with that brow palette? Um, okay, so this this is a couple of easy steps. Do y'all think you could do this? I think so. Now, 
what if you want to make sure that the brow products are going to stay in shape? Well, number one, uh, a lot of the things that I showed you, like the, the brow pencil for, for starters, uh, a lot of those are waterproof. Not that you're going to like hop in a swimming pool and then come out with your brows and go, look at me, I'm all that a bucket of chicken. But this brow gel, I had so many people running after me for this brow gel. Um, so what you do with the brow gel when you're all done, you got everything in place. The brow, the brow gel is just a dense product, right? It's going to help to hold the color on. It's going to just help to hold the brow in shape for um, the rest of however long you want your brows on. So what do you do is you just go over top, right? And you pull it through. Okay. Whee! Sound effects are good. Do you want me to sing to you? Oh my God, I used to sing to my clients. I had Harry Rosen as a client. Um, sorry, I'm talking to myself like you're not even here, and that was rude. I invite you to come out for a play date, and I ignore you. So that's just, look at that even, right? Like, look what the brow gel just did. It helped to just solidify it more. So if you came and you went, my brows are not going to flutter in the wind, that would just be weird anyways, okay? So that that is a, sim a simple little brow. So if you've had enough of Steph K., we would be done right now. So we finished it with a nice little concealer and make sure too that if you do that concealer, um, you know, blend it, like just, just blend it into place. And this is another thing. When I said that I like to do my brows first before anything, um, if I hadn't started my eye makeup, it, it makes it, it, it tells me sort of, um, you know, how what I want the eye design to look like, where it should end, it should all sort of you know fall symmetrically and upward and outward into place. But now I've got a really defined brow, which is great, and it shows me where to end and how how low my eyeshadow should go. Okay, so um, let's do one on the other side, and and really that that's what I would do. Uh, and also when you're my clients, that's also you know sort of what I'm doing. Now I'm going to show you. Um, does anybody actually have any questions or requests at this point? I'm just checking in with you um, because we did, we talked about sort of, you know, what color we would be choosing um, and, you know, sort of like the different products and, and which ones make the most sense for you. And also this is something that, you know, I would do, like you guys could book me and we could do one-on-one -on -one sessions, even if we're on the camera like this, happy to do that for you because we all have a different starting point. But if you look at the pictures I posted, most of those were from weddings, but some people had zero eyebrows, period, nothing. They had no starting point. And, you know, I was using um, waterproof pencils or I would be using some of that, that, like, a pomade because I'm comfortable with it. Okay, I'm going to use the pomade now because I, I mentioned that it can be a little bit tricky to work with. So I'm going to show you how to how to work with something like this. Okay, um, and uh, if I if I mess it up, you still have to encourage me and be be nice to me. Now, okay, look at this brow. All right, the, the, brows are whatever um, sisters. They're not meant to be twins. Something like that. Um, so this, this brow, I, I use this one to demo because it makes me look like a rock star because it's already in good shape. Now this one's my mini minor, mini minor train wreck of a brow of the two. Okay. So, um, it's funny. I, I was a demo a, a while back for, uh, a, a brow class and I had the brow plucked right here and it never grew back. So stop plucking your brows. Um, you know different things there's there's waxing there's threading there's plucking but once you pull those suckers out of your head uh there comes a point where they don't grow back and i've seen very unhappy clients come in without brows and it's you know you're starting from scratch so we have these pomades um a lot of times when you first get them they're they're really creamy like they oh like they, they're really really dense and, and as they age a little bit here's one thing too you open these guys take the, the amount of product out maybe put it on a mixing palette but close it right away so that you'll have the product longer like something like that size for your brows good god i mean that would last me a year or more here's what we do so we take a little bit right you take a really really compressed um tool like this <laughs> dawn i keep saying tool i don't want to scare you lovey dove um but I'm going to just take a little bit, take a little bit of the product like this, okay? Right away, you're going to just wipe it down, wipe it down, wipe it down. Or what we used to do is take the lid and really press it into the lid, you know, like press it into the lid and get rid of any of the excess. So now there's, there's not a lot on this brush, right? And I'm going to use the same sort of technique. So step by step is this is, this is what I do. I brush up, okay, and, and then over. 
because I want to say, okay, you know, how much brow do I have to work with? What, what stage are they in? And then just tame it and look at the way that the brow grows. Okay, so up and moving in this direction and then down and then catch those upper Groucho Marx hairs, put them in place. Yes, I know my brow people. I'll see you soon. And then these upper hairs actually grow down. So, you know, this, this upper brow line has a lot of stuff missing. And this one has some stuff missing too. So we're trying to make her look like she's, um, you know, going to be in, this, in the same um, family photo as her, as close as we can get. So I've got this product. Again, I'm going to take a step in. I don't want to start right on this edge, all right, because I, I, I don't want it to look angry. So I'm going to take a, a, a half step in, and I'm going to start angling upwards, okay? It's that upward angle. And imagine again, we mapped it out, right? So from here. So I got some in my nose, big deal. So you go from the upper eye upwards, okay? Or sort of the dent of your nose as a starting point, imagining for symmetry that it's just a continuation of this arc of the face, okay? I'm just reviewing if you missed this before. This, this inner eye up to where um, you've created the high point, would be sort of the, the, the type of, of an arch that we want to be creating, okay? Is that clear? I hope so. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit more of this pomade because I wiped it down so much that there was nothing on it, and I'm actually confident with this product, okay? So wipe it down, wipe it down, wipe it down, and then we're going to map this out again, okay? Map her out. Notice I'm just doing, and it's very faint. Oh, my God, don't get carried away. You're going to look crazy. See how it's already coming together? Stop. I can hear the fans cheering. The confetti is flying and we're off to an amazing start. Tears in my eyes. I can see the finish line in sight and off I go. Okay. All right. So look at that. Like that's just mapping it. Right. Now, if you got up close, you can still see it's PC, but it still makes me really confident when I map out the lower part of my brow first because it gives me sort of like a direction as to what I'm going to be doing here. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to map out that lower, a nice upward slant. I'm not making Happy McDonald's brows, unless you miss McDonald's. Then you can do a tribute to McDonald's and make Happy McDonald's brows. Go ahead. Who am I to say, good. Let's see, last time I had the, my whole big old hand in front. Okay, so I map it, I map it, I map it. Okay, and I get to the bottom and I can just, you know, do sort of that little triangle-y thing. Pull the product in, and now I look. Now, some people might like that, like that line being super strong to begin with. Then fine, just leave it. Right, it's fine. It's it's okay. I I still soften it though. I soften it up and over into the brow because I can still use it as a mapping, but I get flipped out if I feel like it's gonna look too too strong. Okay, because I like a natural brow. Okay, so I, I I drew it into place very gently with it was with the pomade, yes, with my angled brush, little strokes. Okay, do little strokes because then you'll feel more, more in control of the product. And then I did not go all the way to here because I'm going to I'm gonna use um, generally like a powder for something like that because I want this or a lighter color. I just want this to be nice and soft, okay? So it's coming, right? It's on its way to the races. Um, now, I still feel like th there's a big space in here. This is where it never grew back, okay? So I'm going to take a little bit more of the pomade and I'm still going to use it to map that out and just to fill it in. Okay, like that. Go to a professional though to get your, your the, main, the main shape in and then just maintain it. You see that? I filled in that space, okay? And, and just step back and check in, step back and check in. If you do your makeup way the heck too close like this, um, you're gonna freak yourself out. You, you're gonna think it looks good and then you step back, it doesn't look good. So I brush up and then I come down this way, right? Now, Again, like your, your upper brow really helps to dictate the shape. Like I really like the shape of this one naturally. Um, this one has some renegade hairs like just up here and just up here, just a little bit above. And I would th th get those ones to be like plucked or trimmed out. But I like my, my pro girls to do that. That's what they're here for. Okay, so with the upper, could I take the pomade and, and still etch that out? Well, I could. I'll show you because I'm hardly using any of it, right? I'm not creating a, a super strong, crazy line. So again, if you just sort of brush this down a little bit, it makes it more, brush it down a bit, and it's more apparent where that upper line is, okay? So 
where the brow, so uh, at the top, this is good. I don't need to touch this, like that line is there. But here where it starts to grow down, right, I can just add a little bit of that product just to help fill it in, right? Or even just go a little bit sideways because that's sort of more of the shape we want to create, right? So you see how I just filled that in? It's still, it's still though little, little brush strokes, right? You see how those are coming together. Okay, so that's, that's the pomade. I mean, so as I said, like some of my, my beautiful Middle Eastern clients would probably do like a lot, a lot of their brow with the pomade because they want this dramatic, dramatic look, right? With, you know, the full like cat eyes and full liner. And, and that's fine because it's, it's like a, it's like artwork. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I've used the pomade. And so see, it's manageable if you only use just a little bit of it. Now I'm going to use, again, I'm going to play with a bit of pomade and then I'm going to fill it. Oh, you know what I didn't use? Sorry, guys. You know, I didn't use this. Um, I did speak of these guys. So um, they often have little fibers in them and they're going to give your brow more volume. Okay, so I'll show you how you would use something like this. So um, now, could I use this on its own? I generally don't just because um, I still want to have definition. It's a mascara wand, right? So it's, it doesn't give the definition I need. So I would still use a brow pencil with this or a powder to help define the shape of the brow. But here's what here's how these guys work, right? Um, so you would brush your brush it backwards into the brow, okay? And just and you're going, you're messing it up. No, 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 everyone, just hold the phone. I'm not. I'm just taking product, brushing her backwards, okay? Um, the reason being is they have building fibers right in them. And so that's what's used to create more brow. Could you just take it and go right over top of here? Yeah, you could. But if you just want more volume, go backwards first to create more volume, to create um, like a fuller brow, okay? So you know, just maybe just like wait a little bit just to sort of let it set, you know, just a little dry, just a little bit, you don't have to wait for hours and then go back up. Okay. And then pull it through, go this way. This is that product I was mentioning. That's, you know, if you have a, any gray hairs, it catches it, catches your gray hairs. So I'm just going very lightly through here, right. And pulling the product through. Okay. Um, so it's great for adding more color and more volume, but to use it on its own, it's kind of helpful to have a, a perfect brow shape. And you, it, I don't know, I don't use it on its own. I just don't think it's enough. Um, I would either take, you know, like a, like a precision pencil and still like map out the balance of the shape. And this was used to give the volume of the shape. Does that make sense? Yay, nay, hope so. Um, okay, so then let's, Let's take a look. Uh, I don't know if you can see closely there. I mean, so see, this one is very, very natural. This was done with a bit of powder and with a pencil. This one is more dramatic because I used a pomade, right? But I could still get it as dramatic with the pencil. But this was a very gentle use of a pomade. And then I went backwards with, um, this one's called Gimme Brow. I don't know what our, um, this is a tinted brow cream. Um, this one is Arbonne's, and this one has this one has a lot of tackiness and a lot of payout as well. Okay, so um, and that's what we would do. So just you know, let it dry, let it set. You can use these products in different combinations, though, right? And as I said, if you've got great brows to begin with, and you just brush those suckers into place and pulled a brow gel through, then it could look good too. I don't like to add 150 things to my face. I just don't it's just not my thing um but you know if you look like see how this is just lighter and it's going up and over i really didn't touch it much the, my starting point is pretty good but if you take a lighter color of of shadow but in the same family don't you know don't i don't mean if you're using like a dark brown go with a, all of a sudden a warm brown it's like no just you know go with the lighter shade of the two um like i said if you've got this and then you know just play a little bit between the two and it would be like go do an upward stroke like this and then pull over upward stroke like this and pull over but see how it goes lighter here i'm not going to touch that for for fun go ahead and and, and make that kind of craziness um and you're just gonna it looks it looks angry it looks harsh uh, but this just really you know completes completes the makeup look 
Uh, does anybody have any questions? Oh, let's finish this side too, just because um, we did on the first side. So I'm going to take again um, a, you know, a more compressed brush and I'm going to just finish it. Okay, so I'm just going to, I'm picking up the product. You see, I use something like a lip brush, just a wider lip brush or just um, one that... Uh, is more synthetic and not a poofy brush. I'm gonna go again, if you missed this the first time, you can see it on this side. Okay, so just up and under. Okay, and again, I don't, I didn't take my eye uh, eyeshadow high or anything like that, I'm not messing. So I'll take sort of this end, the more pointed end, just to get right under there, and then just turn the brush slightly on an angle just to soften that, okay? And what I'm doing is I'm just cleaning up that brow, right? And then on this side, okay, I can brush that into place a little bit better because it, it looks it looks a little bit messy. Like I would get this this area sort of cleaned up. If I get brave, maybe I would show you how to actually go at it with tweezers and all that kind of stuff but I don't generally I love my girls to do my brows it's my treat to myself but I like to then take them and shape them and that's what we were focusing on today so even up here okay we're gonna just okay keep it soft though right I was saying we don't want to have this big jaggedy look but this is just to clean it okay and I'm gonna go here up across the top okay and then I'm gonna come down here and sorry guys I had a phone call oh look at that and then we're gonna just come down here and then just take it and soften it soften it soften it soften it fade it out okay fade that out all right now I've got the two looking slightly different but anyways um, but that's how you finish it to make it look really super clean, right? And if you did this a little bit lighter, I mean, it's just gonna make the eyes totally pop and look amazing. Um, so that's um, what we're doing. I'm not sure, can you see, like when I'm getting these crazy notifications on my phone, I, I don't know. Anyways, so that is, those are just really simple brow looks. And then um, we finish it with a concealer to make it look, you know, really, really polished. And then you can take a brow gel, if you wish, and pull it through. Um, but types of combinations I would probably use with a brow gel is like if you're gonna do, you know, like a bit of pencil, a powder, and then a brow gel, or a powder, and then a brow gel work well together. If your starting point is good, you don't wanna use too many products. But um, that is basically it. So, you know, that that's a finished brow. If I wanted to go more dramatic, I would just sort of up, up, the, up this area. You know, if I wanted to make but anyways, that would that would basically conclude the tutorial. So if you are, you know, happy with that amount of knowledge, then you can go. Um, you know, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just intensify this one just for the heck of it. But if you joined me today, thank you. I mean, that's how I do my brows, and that's how generally I would do a client's brow. Um, but let's just make this girl a little more intense, just for the hell of it. Um, so I'm just gonna go up here, right, and this is now going a little bit. So. This is me using the pomade. I'm going to go along the top, pull it down, pull it down. That's the way the brow grows, right? I'm going to go over here. And this is just, you know, intensifying this shape that I've already created. Um, okay. So that was just taking a pomade over top and very little on the end of the brush, right? I don't know. See, I don't know if you guys like something like that to me. I start to feel like unnatural. But that, that's, you know, that's the beauty of something like a pomade is you can make it look like super crazy like that and then just take it and brush it through. And this already had the brow gel in it, but I don't care. I'm just working right over top of it, right? So the spoolie is your best friend. It's just going to pull product right through. But see? Da, 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 da. Just intensifying, filling in the gaps, still not touching this area, okay? And going over, going down, because that's the way that it, it, it grow, your hair grows down here. So take it and start to follow that motion. So it's up, 
over and then down there. Do you like that? I don't know. I feel a bit freakish to me. It's like Alicia. Really? Okay. You like you like this more intense one, right? Because to me, I I feel um, I feel overly expressive, uh, but it's it's viable. And then to me, this is just like the more natural every day, and uh, I don't I don't feel so intense doing it that way. But it's this is completely completely fine. Um, but that's just not what I would generally do. So I'm just gonna check in now to see if anybody has any questions and if not I'm just going to conclude if you have questions about anything I used today um, you know I can I can answer that for you as well uh, so I'm thinking like so also let me know what other kind of topics you would like me to cover because I'm happy to do that <laughs> I was thinking of doing one on on lips um, how to make your lips look more full. Ha ha, keep your comments to yourselves. But there are ways that if you start with a smaller lip that we can make them look, you know, like a little bit fuller. So I'm happy to show you that. But anyways, guys, I hope this was helpful to you. Um, and uh, I'm just looking at some of the comments as they're popping through. Um, so let I would love for you to also send me, send me some shots. Like, you know, just DM me, um, some, like how, when you try to do your own brows, I'd love to see how they turn out. That would be awesome. And, um, you know, I really enjoyed doing this for you today. I tried to make it not to make up artistry, artisty so that you can follow along. So, um, have a great day. Thank you for tuning in with me. Sorry about some of the interruptions. I thought I had turned off my um, notifications. So uh, we will chat soon, okay? And we will talk soon. Bye, guys. Thank you.